Hello, today we're going to be going over to the 20, 2024 Striker. It is a 2613 model, and we are going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, basically, your first switch right here is just going to be so you can turn your light on and off. So if you had to hook up at night, you can see. But your other one is so you're able to extend and retract. That's you know how we're going to get on and off the tow vehicle. But this is also how we level the camper from front to back. I do always like to recommend before we unhook from the tow vehicle, we like to make sure we're level from side to side first. They do have a little stick on levels you can buy that you can stick on the front and on the side of your coach. Uh, we normally like to recommend a carpenter's level right inside the doorway and uh, figure out your side to side. You may have to put some blocks down on one side or the other, but let's use that tow vehicle to help roll onto those blocks. It just makes it a lot easier. Once you have done the side to side, and we're good and level. We're gonna unhook from the tow vehicle, your chains, your seven way. You're gonna pull forward and then level front to back with this guy. Once you are good from side to side and front to back, that's when you would lower your stabilizer jacks. These guys are basically on the corners of each of the coach. The nice thing is, is these guys are actually motorized. So we have a switch right here. This is gonna operate our front stabilizer jacks. And then there is another switch in the rear for the rear stabilizer jacks. We'll see that once we've come around to the other side. Next, behind that, we're gonna have our two 30-pound tanks. These guys have both been filled, minus what was used to test the propane system with. But then the guy here in the middle is gonna be your regulator. Basically, this tells you, one, what tank you're using, but two, it'll also let you know when the tank is empty. There's a little window in here. Basically, it'll have a little red-looking flash card there that'll pop up when the tank is empty. Right now, it's probably gonna read red because I have both tanks off the, when I did our gas test. If I go to turn this guy on, it takes usually a couple of seconds, but then it'll look clear. You can basically see through it. it. Tells you that we got propane flow. This model is designed to where if you wanted to, you can actually point this downward and have both tanks open and it'll basically pull from both tanks at the same time. We don't like to do that because, you know, you're gonna wake up probably at three o'clock in the morning, both tanks are empty and you have no way for heat. We always like to recommend one at a time. So that way when it's empty, you can always turn the one off Flip your indicator to the other tank, turn this one on, and then the next day you can go get the other guy refilled. Back behind that is where our battery is located, just 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. And then you're gonna see this big box here, it says the vault. Uh, it's nice and fancy, but all that guy really is, is it's got your battery disconnected. It's right here on this side. I'm gonna swap sides here with the camera lady so you guys are able to see that. So basically right now it's in the green. So it's saying that it's allowing the, basically while we're plugged into sure power, it's gonna help charge those batteries for us. But when we are storing the camper, we always wanna turn this guy to that off position. So that way, if anything was potentially left on that draws a lot of power, it wouldn't drain your battery. Now, the nice little perk about that is, is that you do have solar panels. And we're gonna talk a little more about that once we've gotten to the other side of the coach. They added a nice little feature with the solar panels. All right, as we come around to the side here, this is basically gonna be where you would access your generator. You are able to also start your generator from inside. There's a control panel in the bedroom, and we'll see that once we have stepped inside. Uh, but basically, when you're first gonna go use this guy, give me two seconds. Oh, here, we're just gonna cheat our way in victory. We'll just do this one. <laughs> Unplug that guy. All right, so basically what you'll do, and it even kind of tells you right here what you would have to do, but basically right here it says stop and prime. So as you hear, there was just a couple of and that stopped. A lot of times you might get a little more clicks, but you're gonna do that until you don't hear that anymore. And then you're just gonna hit the stop button. And as you can tell, it is pretty loud. It always sounds loud because we have basically our door off. We have this open. When this is all closed off, it is actually a lot quieter. <coughs> this here is where you would check your oil level for that guy. And there is a manual inside to let you know when it needs to be serviced or looked at, things along that nature, and how to operate this as well. Uh, this guy will not automatically, as soon as you turn it on, isn't automatically going to start up the camper. It does have a delayed reaction before it will actually connect the circuits. And then you can run off your generator. 
you have what they call the key to light camper. So you have one key that basically operates every lock on this door or on your coach. Just turn, locked. Nice and simple. All right, so next we're gonna have the water heater. So with this guy, you got, oh, I hear a fridge. It's gonna start beeping at us here in a minute because I got the propane turned off. All right, so basically with this guy here, this is, I believe the 10 gallon, the 10 gallon water heater, which is nice. So you get a lot more water compared to the normal six gallons. But basically with this guy it has the gas and electric option on it. For the electric option, it's gonna be located on a switch on the lower, lower left side. You do have to make sure there is water in this tank before you turn that on. If not, you will burn out the element. Just telling you that now. But when you are done using this guy, you want to make sure you get all the water out of it. You're basically gonna pull this guy to relieve the pressure. And then you're gonna take this guy out down here. This is your anno rod. This guy starts out the size of a dime and will work itself down the size of a coat hanger. Basically what it's doing is it's attracting the impurities in the water so it attacks that rod and not the tank, okay? Now, there's the gas option as well that is located inside on a switch and we'll see that once we have stepped inside. This switch does not have to be on for the gas option to work. Well, I took too long, I hear a fridge beeping at us. All right, down below that is basically where you would go to dump. As you see, I got my little clear elbow on here because we like to try to drain the water instead of going all over the place. But generally, there's going to be your sewer hose that would connect to this end. This guy goes into the ground. But then you're going to have your black handle for your black tank, and you got a gray handle for the gray tank. All right, now when you go to dump your black, which should always be first, you are also going to do a tank flush. Basically, it's a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around, gets all the nastiness out. When you go to hook up to that and use that, you have to make sure that this valve is open. And I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. It's right over here with our water station area. But once you're done with your black tank, you would close that guy off and open your gray to drain the gray. Where's it, okay. Right here's where it's gonna be your gravity fed, uh, fresh water tank. Basically you stick the hose in and let it fill. You do want to read the monitor panel inside for when the tank does read full, you want to shut that water off so it isn't trying to start squirting back out at you. The reason for that is over time, it can actually start causing damage to the outside of the camper and inside where it's connected on the back side of this piece here. You do also have satellite and cable hookups. If you're using a campground cable, you do have to turn off the TV antenna booster. And I will show you that once we have stepped inside where that is located. For satellite, you just hook up your dome to that. The connections is a completely separate connection on the inside for that. As you see here, there's the caution sticker. That is because this is your black tank flush. Now, what I always like to tell the customers, we like to try to keep it simple as possible. But basically what you will do is you are going to use a pressure regulator on the water spigot and then go out and get yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. Okay, but the reason for that pressure regulator is because on the back side of this guy is a plastic check valve. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. All right, so that's why I like to recommend the pressure regulator. So when you're doing your flush, you're gonna make sure your hose, everything's all connected. You'll open your black, start dumping, then turn your water on, okay? If you do not open that valve and you start allowing water to go in here and your tank's already full, that guy's gonna come out of one or two places, okay? It's either gonna come out of the toilet or it's gonna come out of the vent stack on the roof. But both situations will be bad and messy and nasty. All right, so next down below that, you got a quick connect for an outside sprayer that is located in our compartment on the other side. But basically that piece would just go in here, you push and lock, push and twist to lock it in. You got your 30 amp power cord that does come with the coach. And then down here is where you would hook up for your city water. As you see, I also have a little aftermarket piece on here. This is pretty much a 90 elbow. That is because as you see where they like to have placed it, it's, it was hard for us to actually hook our hose up to it. So I would like to recommend that you would like to get yourself a 90 degree to help angle that water. So that way, if it's sitting straight up and down, if you're using your furnace, it ain't potentially gonna get your uh, hose hot and soften a spot up on it where it could bust on you. But that guy would just twist right out. Beep. 
beep, beep. Fridge is yelling at us. I can hear it. Come on. All right, when you're going to drain your fresh water tank, that is going to be located right underneath here where you got a nice like inch and a half pipe tubing. It's going to open it, but there's a handle there on the back side that you have to pull to open it. They put it on the back side of that tire, so I do hope you have some longer arms because um, my short arms could barely reach it to close it when I was filling your tank <laughs> to test the system. All right, so you guys have a what they call a Schwinn textile slide. One thing I do have to tell you guys is that when these guys are to never be lubricated, okay? When they start looking dirty or dingy, things like that, it looks like there's debris getting inside these gears right here. The recommendation for that is just simple soap and water. Scrub them down, rinse them off, okay? These guys basically work on two independent motors that talk to each other through a, uh, through a control panel when the room's coming in or out. And we'll talk a little more about that inside as well. We'll talk about the tires once we get to the other side. This guy here is gonna be the back of your fridge. Uh, there isn't really anything you would have to do in here except for maybe check for mud dauber nest or wasp nest. Um, but basically you don't wanna to try to block these guys so that the fridge can properly breathe, uh, especially during those hotter weather. Uh, then you got your vent for the stove. I am gonna backtrack for just two seconds because I literally just went right over our uh, uh, furnace. We do like to recommend getting mud dauber screens for these guys, okay? Helps keep the wasps and mud daubers out of there from creating a nest that could potentially cost you guys some serious money, okay? Those mud dauber screens are usually $15 or less, uh, but they can save you a headache from having to have it brought in and serviced because a mud dauber nest is blocking something. Or they, a nest was built and you go to turn it on, some of those guys are really, uh, some of them nests can be really t stiff and can actually break some of the fan blades. Uh, but shop labor rates vary from location to location. So if you didn't bring it back to us, you took it somewhere else, uh, you're liable to experience a, a higher uh, shop rate. So just please keep that in mind. All right, as we get here towards the back, uh, this is where you would fill in the fuel tank because uh, it's got the fuel tank on there. And then inside this guy here is where you have a gas pump where you're able to fill your toys. So to turn this guy on, there's a little control down here. So you have to press and hold this guy, the off button for usually a couple seconds. As you see, they both flash and then it says off. From there, we're able to turn it on and then we'd be able to start dispensing our fuel. The nice thing with this is, is this is designed that you hear that pump running right now, it actually will siphon any fuel that was you didn't use that's still in the line back into the tank so that line that line isn't staying full with fluid or fuel. And there is also a gas gauge on here as well. Uh, we don't have enough fuel in there to really, uh, for it to read. Uh, we do put enough in there to be able to test the gas system or to test the generator and uh, our pump here. This guy here is going to be venting. There's one lower here. The one on the other side is going to be higher up. It's so that you can open these when you have your toys in there or your motorcycle. Uh, so that way that uh, gas fumes won't accumulate inside the coach. All right, so next we're going to have our outside deck area. Basically, you would open these guys here. shining just bright right now now it is this guy is heavy okay so you do have to either have one person work with you or you just got to kind of be carefully walk it down so these guys here from here as you see, you got these guys here. These guys can't come off by pulling these pins. So when you're wanting to try to put your toy on uh, or toy inside, you would take these guys off. You would pull these pins so that that way your whole ramp will come down. But when you're going to set this up for use, basically you would unhook it from this guy here. This folds over. And then lifts up. 
And then this guy will slides in and locks into place. And you would do the same thing on the other side. And during travel, they do have, so they got this guy here to help hold this in place. But then they also, each side also has a strap right here that button snaps to help hold this so it isn't bouncing around on you as well. Then when you go to bring this guy up, you do usually have to watch your cables to make sure that they don't get in the way. for an observational backup camera. Uh, the customers that is purchasing this unit will actually be having a camera installed on this. Um, I just have to wait for some uh, previous work to dry before I can uh, start putting that guy on. All right, as we come around to the other side, this is gonna be for the rear stabilizers. Basically to bring them up, bring them down. And you just basically what you're looking for, I'm going to just show you that is that once these guys get to the ground, you'll hear that motor change. When it starts sounding like there's a load getting on it, you can hear the change of that sound. That's when it's telling you basically you need to stop. Got our outside speakers on. I'm not real sure if you can hear them in the video right now. And as you've seen, you probably see some of these extra little lights on around the coach. Uh, those are gonna be like security or scare lights. And those are located on your control panel. All right, so next we're going to have our tires here. All right, as you see, you got this check lug nuts, and it's even on your door to tell you to check your lug nuts before you leave. All right, this is what I like to call our over aggressive sticker. All right, the reason why I like to call it over aggressive is because it tells you it wants to check the lug nuts at 10 miles, 25 miles, and 50 miles. That is what I like to call the over aggressive sticker. Most other stickers are uh, usually it'll tell you to check them at 50, 100, and 200 miles. I always like to recommend that once you guys are done camping, the first place that we are usually stopping when we leave the campground is the uh, gas station to refuel. While you're refueling, you can check your lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. My forklift driver likes to be a little loud sometimes. <laughs> Uh, you also do want to make sure you keep these guys topped off to the max PSI level. And these guys, I believe, were 80 PSI. Nice thing is, these are the Goodyear Endurance, so it actually tells you real big what size that is. I did also forget to tell you, you want to torque these lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. 100 foot-pounds. You're able to hook up a TV for outside, connection, and a 110 plug. And we'll talk a little more about these uh certain plugs that are labeled once we have stepped inside. And then as we kind of come towards the front here, we're gonna have that sprayer I was telling you about that we quick connect on the back side. Our customer's camera system in here that I got to install still. But basically this guy here is designed to like, right now you, it does not have it, but it is already pre-prepped for an inverter. So you can, you know, you can put an inverter in it if you wanted to. This guy here, is your solar disconnect. So basically, a nice little feature that they have with this is that they've now made it to where when you're plugged into, um, when you're plugged in to Sure Power, you would want to disconnect this so that the pa uh, solar panels are not having to work as well. But then when you are just pulling this guy down the road, or if you're having it somewhere at a permanent spot, uh, but you turn the power off, you would turn this to that on position, and then once the batteries get below a certain level, this controller right here allows the current from the panels to come through to charge the batteries. And then once it's reached full, it'll shut that circuit off. This here is for an aftermarket tire monitoring system. And then they do give you a light here so you can see. 
Here's our switch. And it does have a USB hookup on it as well. <coughs> All right, so your door here, basically you're gonna have a lock to hold your door in place. They do also have it set up to where most of these door frames are all built the same, so they already have built-in items here if you wanted to put a hydraulic strut on it. Your steps here just basically do a fold and a fold, and then that's all there is with those. All right. We're going to step inside. Your fire camera is going to be right here on the left-hand side. Stop our beeping. But right here is going to be where our control panel is located. So with the control panel, basically it tells you your battery status and then your tank status. As I was going to say, I should still have a little water in the fresh tank, but then we have black one and gray one that are empty. You only have one black tank and one gray tank, so two are not used. You got your water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're hooked to the fresh, if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need that guy. Then the gas option for the um, water heater. When you go to turn this on, this DSI fault light will come on. Basically, that light will stay on until it has sense of flame that is lit. When that happens, then that light will shut off. This will try to cycle three times. If it does not fire on propane after the third time, that DSI fault light will stay on. From there, you just want to look and see, did I forget to turn the tank on? Is the tank possibly empty? Then we got our cabin lights, our auxiliary light. Now, I believe this one was... Gotta try to remember which ones was which here. I think this one was for the back uh, back corner. Your cap lights, you got a porch light, your awning lights, and then these this auxiliary is for the back two white lights above the deck. And then this one down here is actually has two, you have two red LEDs underneath the coach. And that's what this switch is, is to turn it on and turn it off. Well, we're also here, you got this power control system. So basically, you're able to select, go through here. You're able to scroll through, and if there's something you didn't want to use, it even tells you water heater's powered, fridge is powered, AC rear, AC front. It just tells you everything that is going through the system. But you should, if I'm not mistaken, no loads, it's shred. So that's, you know, you're able to go through that guy. I would read the manual to try to get a better emphasize on that. Then we also have down here is our carbon monoxide and LP detector. This guy is to be tested every seven to 14 days. And to do so, you just simply push this button and you are performing the test. And it goes back to green. These guys are usually good for about seven to 10 years. I have seen these guys go out before that. Um, but the reason you, you do want to periodically check them because they can go bad. Um, nice thing is with this model here, it actually has the uh, replace by date on the front, which is actually pretty nice. All right, we're gonna come back to all the other stuff up top here shortly. We're gonna make our way here to the bedroom area. Uh, basically in the bedroom uh, each side is provided with a 110 outlet a drawer You have closet space on each side as well and a little cubby space You do also have 110 hookup on the back side of this wall over here You do have individual reader lights There is also a switch up there for a little pretty ambiance light above your area up here but then over here in this corner is where you would go to start the generator from inside the coach. Let me turn this on so you guys can see. And basically, as you see, it's the same style switches as outside. Nice thing is with these guys, these also have the built-in USB hookups. Once again, you can plug it in, be able to run your phone down here, and hopefully the, the wire won't hit you in the face while you're sleeping. Over here in this corner is gonna be where our fire exit window is. This guy's on a hinge, so the whole window will fling open so you're able to get out. And then you got some storage under the bed. There's not a lot. Basically inside there is going to be our manual crank handles for the coach. We've got our light switch for the bedroom. And then this thermostat here is going to control 
just this air conditioner. When you first burn it, turn it on, it'll light it up. You can usually push these two buttons and it'll tell you what the temp is inside the coach. But then you go to turn it on and it'll show you fan first. Always recommend having this fan in the auto position. If it is in low or high, uh, you go to turn your furnace on, the air conditioner will continually run on the other thermostat. On this thermostat, like I said, it just controls the air conditioner. We can push this guy again and it'll show you the snowflake and then you adjust your temperature. Give that guy just a second, he should come on. There it goes. Now this one does show you furnace, but it does not operate your furnace. Only the one in the living area is what controls your furnace. And then you're back to the off position. Uh, one thing I do like to tell customers about this style thermostat is you do not want to try to jam these buttons, okay? These guys are really touch sensitive. Uh, there's a foam pad on the out on the back side of this that presses against the prong to adjust your temperature or change what you're trying to do. When you start jamming on that, it actually damages that foam uh, that foam piece. And then the thermostat, you'll try to push up and it'll max all the way out. Or you try to push down, it'll max all the way out. Or you'll try to change something, uh, try to turn it on or anything like that, and it'll just start cycling through. Uh, so try not to jam push these buttons. Real touch sensitive. All right. Next, we got our luxurious bathroom here. Ta-da! Oh, I did forget to show you a little side door here. You just unhook and it'll slide across. Uh, you got cabinetry space uh, in these two cabinets here. And then down here, as you see, I have a panel removed at this time. Basically, this is where you are going to go and winterize your coach. Okay, so you got these two white valves here. So you would turn them like this so that when you go to winterize, your antifreeze is going to come in and just go around the water heater and not go inside. Then there's a the same knob is gonna be located up here towards the top. That's gonna to be for this guy here so that you're able to stick this into your jugs of antifreeze and winterize your coach. Uh, this guy will probably take, eh, as long as you can get all the water out of your coach, I would like to say you could probably get by with mm, roughly about two and a half to three gallons of antifreeze. But please don't quote me on that. Now they do have another valve down here as well, uh, but that one had me a little kind of confused um because that ties into your to your water lines so i am not 100 sure why you would shut that valve off because all it's going to do is just have your antifreeze go into the system and then come just keep cycling around so I, honestly i think they messed up and they should not put that valve in there just to be honest and truthful with you all right next we're going to have our shower this is to always be secured during travel But then you're gonna have this guy here. Basically, you have a little thing here you can turn. Basically what it does is it shuts off or reduces the flow of water. So you can try to get the most out of your hot water. The reason for that is because most water heaters and campers are usually six gallons, but the average American will use 38 gallons of just hot water alone when they're taking a shower. Uh, so you're just outmatched right out the gate. So that reducer is just to try to help you get the most out of your water. We got our GFCI outlet here, so for some reason, some outlets are not working in the coach. If they have this GFCI, GFCI sticker on it, come and see if this guy hasn't been tripped, okay? All right, so real quick, we are also going to talk a little bit more about the panel, like I, or the outlets, like I was saying. So if you see any of the outlets that have this sticker on them, okay, this is actually set up and designed. So if you actually install an inverter on this, all these outlets that have this sticker are operational through that inverter, which is actually a pretty nice feature. But once again, it's an aftermarket option. You got your medicine cabinet, where we got our drain plug for the sink. Uh, then you got your bathroom sink, storage underneath. Then we got our toilet here. So with the toilet, we usually don't like to recommend you would have a little bit of water in the bowl of that toilet. So that way that seal doesn't necessarily get dry rotted or brittle. Because when that happens, the smell can start to come through and we just don't want that, okay? Um, just make sure you do that. I like to also tell the cleaner, if you take nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of that toilet. It helps everything slide down easier and makes an easier clean for the cleaner, okay? You also wanna make sure that you are using chemicals when you go to use your toilet, all right? They have liquids and pouches. Uh, if you're using a liquid, I always say just open this guy up and just pour and say one, two. 
and that's it. Or you can get yourself a little shot glass that you can keep in your medicine cabinet and give the toilet some shots. Uh, but basically two ounces of the liquid will treat a 40 gallon tank. If you're using pouches, I do like to recommend that you would put some bowl in the, or water in the bowl first, usually about to right here, and then put that pouch in. Make sure that pouch dissolves. I have seen certain pouches where they have not dissolved, okay? So please just be mindful of that. And then you got a little cabinet up here, and if you got some really long arms, your towel hook. All right, as we come around the, our other doorway here, oh, back up. Got our light switch, and then this guy here is going to be for your fan, basically to open your vent. Then your other switch turns on the fan. Up and down, up and down. All right. All right, so then we have the other thermostat for the front or for the rear air conditioner, but this one is also what we control the furnace. And basically the wavy lines that you've seen on your other thermostat would be the furnace side. This guy here is going to be for your ceiling fan. Turn that guy on and speed. And it's got, I believe it had three different fan speeds, almost the same style as, you know, your home would be. That guy works pretty nice. This switch here is going to be so that you can operate the bed lift. I believe that there is an, a, a video already made for the bed lift system. So there will be either a uh, attached video or a second flash drive to show you how the bed system works. Um, it was I'm pretty positive it was in a different model of the striker. Yep, but it was the, the 3313. Thank you. But the bed lift still is going to be the same kind of concept, okay? So it just might look a little different in that video, but still same concept, okay? Um, <clears throat> got two remotes here. Oh, as you see, I just turned on our inside speakers. This is going to be your remote for the radio, which is going to be located right up top, where you have the options for Bluetooth, AM, FM, auxiliary hookup, uh, which is normally on the back side of this, I do believe. And then it does have an HDMI hookup as well. Let me just turn that guy off so I ain't trying to talk over. All right. Then above that is where our TV is located. You do have a switch right here. This guy just gives you a pretty little ambiance look. Woohoo. Fancy. Uh, when that guy is powering up, we're going to go ahead and pull this back. Basically right here is that TV antenna booster I was telling you about. So right now it's in the on position. So it is actually pulling the signal feed from the antenna itself. The antenna is considered to be the primary source. So you usually have to shut that source off for that cable feed to come through. All you would do is just simply push that button and that stops the cable or the antenna feed. And then the top is for that satellite. And then you got a nice smart style TV. I do not have this hooked up to the internet at this time. That is something that you guys would have to do once you have got it home. But I did go ahead and scan four channels to make sure that our antenna does properly work. And uh, I believe we ended up getting, I think, 43 channels or possibly 46. We'll find out here in just a second. Uh, basically, you're going to push the three, arrow, or three lines, and that's going to pull up your menu up here. You're going to go all the way to the end where it says Settings. And we're doing this because if you guys are not near the St. Louis area, you guys are going to have to rescan for TV channels. <clears throat> Go down to channel. From there, you'll go to channel installation mode. This is only if you're using the campground cable. If you're going to continue to use the antenna, you don't have to do anything with that one. But you go up to channel sources. As you see, you would go to tuner. You push the OK button, and it's going to start auto-scanning for you. I'm going to hit done because it'll start an auto-scan as soon as I hit the OK, and we already know that it's all done and works already. All right, you got more cabin spe uh, space up top, down below as well, and underneath your sink, and then you're going to have your fuse control panel box. Basically, with this guy, 
anything that you need sure power to work is going to be on your breakers and they have it labeled for you as well everything that runs off your battery is going to be on the fuses and they have those all labeled for you which is which as well also and it does have as you see that sticker on there it says auto detect uh that's because of a lot of customers are starting to switch to the lithium because of the longer life cycles, things along that nature. Uh, nice thing is, is with that one that you wouldn't have to take that whole box out and do some stuff with the converter to actually um, get it to start charging properly for lithium. It'll just automatically sense that and do that change for you. So over here is going to be uh, most of our manuals for the appliances in the coach. Where did I see? Okay, it's over there. Uh, this is going to be for the generator. This here is like your key for the uh, bathroom, but then the uh, other manuals are for the appliances. And that all goes in this fancy pretty little bag right here. Uh -oh. I hear my driver again. <laughs> all right, space uh, cabinets up here, down here. And then you got your three drawers. These guys here are actually going to be for your oven. We're going to talk about that in just a second because that is actually something really nice and I really like this in these coaches. We're going to have our microwave. Uh, microwave is pretty self-explanatory. I do like to say set the time. Uh, if you guys go out and about, you come back, you see the timer isn't set. That means that there was a power failure. You want to look and see if that was from the campsite or from the electric company. Then we got our hood range where you got your light and your fan. For that fan to be operationally or working properly, you do have to make sure that vent outside is open. And then for our stove, basically you would just turn this to that light position. This is your top burner spark to light. And then once it's lit, you would just set to your desired temperature. They do have a switch here so you can turn these on so it's nice pretty ambiance. That's the top side towards the bottom. It lights up these, but it is also the light for your air fryer oven yes i said air fryer oven i am going to tell you that this is a really nice feature in campers uh basically all you gotta do is just turn it fan already came on just that easy so you know you can even set your temperatures one thing you do have to note though is with the air fryer part or with this oven this is 110, so you have to be hooked up to sure power for this to be working properly. But then you got your basket and like a drip tray or a baking tray for that. Very nice. And then you got more storage underneath that as well. A lot of storage. So then we got our fridge. So with the fridge, you got your on and off button. And then, right, oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, camera lady. Right now, this is in the auto position. So in the auto position, it is always going to be looking for 110. If we were to unplug or if it was to lose power, as long as the propane is on, it will automatically switch to gas. The only way you're going to know, though, if it doesn't fire on gas is that this check light would come on if it doesn't fire on, the, on, on propane. And it also will beep at you like we were hearing earlier in the video. You can also switch it to just gas if you wanted to by pushing this button. As you see, that auto light just went off, and then that's all we're going to do, which this guy will come on and start beeping at us because we don't have no propane going right now. So we're just going to go ahead and turn that back to the auto position. And it does also have startup instructions right here as well. And in the fridge area, if you ever needed to, you're able to adjust the temperature of the fridge itself by sliding this up to make it colder. Down's going to make it warmer. And then we do have our owner's manual, instruction manual in here. Let's pull those guys out. This guys right here are going to be for when you are storing the camper. You want to prop these doors open so that way the mildew or mold or moisture like that doesn't get trapped inside and starts creating all those nastiness. This guy slippily just slides right through here. Oh, of course, I got to do it right. This guy slides over like this and then just sits and it keeps that door vented so that way that it can dry out properly without mildew or mold forming. But you're going to do this when you're storing the camper because these guys are not real strong and they can't easily pop open with a strong enough churn. All right. Like I said, please watch the attached video on our uh, bed lift and our setup here. 
Uh, they do actually give you some nice little curtains on the back side of your deck. So if you had the party deck opened up, you can't, you know, you can have that closed off. So no bugs or anything like that can get inside the coach. Uh, then you got your little uh, chairs slash recliners. Um, these guys here, they're actually pretty neat. They're, they actually say that they are cigarette resistant. And on the back it says, the filling material and cover fabric meets the requirements for resistance to cigarette ignition in the 1988 safety regulations. Carelessness, care, carelessness causes fires. But this guy is actually pretty nice. You can sit in this guy. You got a little handle right here. You pull, and you're able to prop this guy open. You can even tilt it back if you want and just have a nice little relax and chill. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. uh, I fought with these guys for almost an entire day trying to figure out why I couldn't get these guys to close. Uh, what you have to do is you actually have to take the bottom of your feet and kind of pull the bottom of this up towards you to help release those springs to bring it back in. Believe me, I was trying to press on it. I was using all my legs trying it. One time that I tried to press real hard, the chair come up and hit me in the head. So please just note that you have to kind of put some pressure towards the bottom of that to help it release the close. And this guy does have a strap that does secure basically to your brackets back here to keep them in position so they ain't sliding all over the place on you. You got more storage up above again. Uh, this guy, this light here is also a USB hookup as well. We already talked about our radio. You got this light here, kind of gives you a little ambiance light above the bed area. And then we have made our way back to the door, but I'm not in this video just yet because we're going to come back to our control panel. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and bring this room in so you guys can kind of hear those motors operating. Okay, so that way that you uh, can kind of hear that sound. One thing you also have to know is with a Swintec style slide, there is no halfway point with these guys. It's either all the way in or all the way out. Okay, so please be mindful and noted of that. Uh, let's see here. Kind of hear those motors operating. Now, when you're done doing this, either bringing the room in or out, you want to hold that button for an extra three to five seconds. And once again, the reason for that is because there's two independent motors. Okay, so one might be spinning just a few resolutions faster than the other one. So that's why you want to hold that button in just for a little bit, just to help make sure that the room comes all the way in. So this side might come in all the way, but there's still like maybe that much of the other side that's still out. Well, that motor, this motor would stop and the other one would continue to bring the rest of that room in. Okay, and I also did forget to show you your awning. We're going to go ahead and open that guy up real quick so you guys can see that guy. And then we will talk about that for just a brief moment. While that is opening, there is the danger sticker here that is recommended. You do not want to take that off because that is an important sticker for this coach. Basically, it's just letting you know about gas fumes and kind of things along that nature. So when you go to open this guy, you want to make sure that that flap there is going to be vertical with the ground. And then we'll come out here to this guy. And what you're able to do is to take this guy right here and pull down and it will create a pitch for your awning. Okay, this guy is meant to be as a shade protectant. It is recommended that if you are going to be leaving your camper unattended, you need to make sure that you bring your awning in. The reason for that is you never know when a pop-up storm can occur or strong gusts of winds. Basically, with a strong enough gust of wind, it can cause damage to both your awning and the camper if you are not careful. Okay, so please always be mindful of that. All right, so but from there, that should conclude our video. Hopefully, this was knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have questions, please feel free to call us, and we do our best to answer those for you over the phone. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.